Hello. It's nonsensical me. <laughs> I don't know where I come up with my words, but sometimes I'd like to tell you a little story. This young lady, she goes to school. She has a fight with somebody. All at once, she can start hearing what people are thinking. Every time she turns around, she can hear what someone is thinking, including her teacher. All the students, she can hear what each one's thinking. At lunchtime, she's in the lunch thing, and she hears this kid, his thoughts. He says, well, I'm going to whatever. She knew what that meant. She knew it meant trouble. Well, the next day, she knew exactly. She figured out where he would be, and so did her friends. She went up to where he was, and he was in a tower like she had thought, and he was going to exactly what he talked about. She didn't know what to do. He was holding it there, ready to do what a person in his position should not be doing. He stood there with it. And she told him, she said, no, it's not worth it. She said, don't do that. She said, you know, I've been able to read minds. I've been able to hear everybody's thoughts. And they're so noisy, I can't even think myself. And then she also said, you know what? Everybody is so self-involved in their own problems, their own issues. All they're thinking about is, what am I doing today? Am I pleasing everybody? Is everybody okay with what I'm doing? What should I do? They're so self-involved. She told him, she said, you know, it's not worth it. Because everybody has their own problem. Everybody has their own issue. Everybody's upset themselves. And they don't know how to share it or say it or feel it. Well, the young lady made that guy think. And he went and he got his help that he needed. And she had once again saved the school. But you know what? When we think about that and how it happens to everybody and how it often happens to people, we wonder how can they ever do something like that? Are people really that upset? Are people really that disgruntled? We think to ourselves, are people really so self-involved that that's all they can think about? You know, sometimes when you're sitting in a car, you're sitting in the back seat because you're counting on whoever is driving to drive you there, right? But the problem is, when we take God out of the driver's seat and put somebody else in it, We're making a big mistake because God has to be our driver. God has to be our leader. God has to be the one we depend on to take us anywhere we need to go. Because without God, you can't move forward. You're stuck. Because God is life. God is our life. God is inside each and every one of us. When we make decisions, we make decisions for the better, not worst. And we count on God to guide us. The Bible is the lighthouse of our life. The light that directs us where we need to go. I'm down to earth. And yes, I'm not full of big words 
because I didn't learn big words. I'm not full of a bunch of indescribable words that you can't understand because I didn't grow up that way. You see, everybody is always thinking about themselves. And everybody is so unsure, so scared, and so busy panicking this day and age. They don't think about anything else. A person goes to work and they've got six children at home and they're trying to support their six kids. They're thinking, what's going to be on the table next week? Am I going to make enough money to take home groceries for my children? Work is work. And no matter what, people are going to have bad days and good days. And it's hard. You go to work and you expect everything to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect because we don't live in a perfect world. Our world is like everybody else's. What we have to do is we have to accept ourselves, then we can accept others. And if we accept God and ourself, that is what helps us accept others. We think inside, we think, oh, they're really making fun of me. They're talking bad about me. No, they're not. Honey, they don't talk bad about you. They don't talk bad about anybody else, for that matter. They're concerned with what they're putting on the table. They're concerned with what they're buying for their kids. Their child, probably the day before, had a bad day when they came home and told their mom all about it, and then it just spills over and work. But who's got time to stand there and fill in the blanks when you're busy working? Yeah. what I'm saying. Never take it for granted that people are too busy to listen because they will if you give them a minute or two, or two and really, really pay attention. But if you're going to better yourself, make yourself better because you're the only one that can control what you do how you do it, and how you say it. God loves each and every one of us. No matter what we look like, or act like, or anything, it doesn't matter. What matters is that we control what we are on the inside. What matters is we show that wonderful person that's on the inside so that they can see who and what we really are. People are precious. People are not to be messed with or taken for granted. When you go to work, you're looked at as a robot or a thoughtless thing. Well, honey, we're not all thoughts, thoughtless. We have thoughts. This one guy He'd go to work, then he'd go home and he'd hug a tree on his way in the house. And his wife asked him why after about a week, and he said, I leave all my cares on that tree. Then I can be the husband I have to. It's not always easy. We have to trust God and make sure he's in the driver's seat of our life. Because there's a lot of emotions running high. And that's the way it's going to be. That's what we have to get used to. Take care and God bless. And God be with you all. Bye now.